What's up, kids? Welcome to Austin Real. My name's Shane Pearson. This is Brandon Lopez coming to you from Austin, Texas, United States of America, one of the greatest places in the world. London Real, I have to thank you first off and foremost. Uh, what you've done for me has in inspired me and given me the opportunity to be here today and to talk with y'all and share my buddy, my whole life, all my friends, all my experiences. Uh, first off, my first sponsor is 512 and the Avenue, uh, downtown bars on, on 6th Street in Congress. Um, both badass places. I love working there. Literally working at the door has put me on the map. Not only that, I met some crazy, credible people, uh, including uh, one of my buddies who's a, a rapper. And we're actually going to start off with his song, and then we'll get the podcast rolling. So here it is without... Any more introduction? Synchronized to Moke, the motherfucking shit. Straight out of Midland, straight out of Atlanta, straight out of Houston, straight out of Texas. What's up? They said I would never make it. I was too real, then the mother niggas faking. Straight cake, sweeter than the birthday. If you cross me, I'm murking in the worst way. Um, like Mo, got a swag bag. And if you ain't on the team, get a bag bag. And if it ain't about the cream, don't holler back. You ain't giving up the pussy, I ain't calling back. Hmm. No one but the Dow Town, and it's about to go down on the Dow Jones. Crown homes, cause I'm taking your crown, yo. And the niggas around me getting crowned, yo. King money, talking about the king shit. Bring the bra, watch it hop up on the king dick. Real, and I ain't trying to do my own shit. I'm just trying to say some of these niggas straight bitch. Don't talk about it, think about it. Cause if you can't do that, then why you thinking about it? Don't talk about it, believe about it. And if you can't do that, then why you think about it? Yeah. Told these niggas don't get me wrong. Cause this ain't even that type of song. I view life through a bone. Thinking to myself, why success takes long. Walking on the journey like maybe life is worth it. Niggas trying to jerk me, bitches trying to hurt me. Tell us what they see, cause the nigga out here working. Burden ain't the word, cause it's more I deserve. Cut a couple friends out, now it's my world. Now it's my turn. Mokey in the first. Yeah, and I swear it's like a war. I swear the people running back, begging for some more. Uh. Boom! Synchronized to Moke. It's my homie. He's going to be on the podcast later. All right. Brandon Lopez, say hello to the world. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, so how long have I known you, Brandon? Probably 20 years. 20 years? Probably. When do we meet? Like no, no, third no. grade? Yeah, maybe like 17 years. 17 years? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Anyways, one of my best buddies right here. Mm -hmm. We've been through some crazy shit. Um, one time when I was in like... When I was in eleventh grade, no, that's too old. When I was in, when I was in seventh grade, I tried to dye my hair blonde, but it ended up being orange like this motherfucker. We we would go to the park and people would yell out redhead and shit. And now I know how he feels. So I've lived in his redhead shoes. So uh, it's tough to be a ginger. It's tough to be a ginger. So I've heard. And for, fortunately, I got him in my life, so I get to experience it firsthand almost. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, no problem. But, uh, Brandon, how can you explain your last name? Because Lopez, and you don't look Mexican at all. Uh, so so where does that come from? All right. Um, uh, so, yeah, my name is Brandon Lopez. Boom. Uh, I'm Hispanic. I guess my great-great-grandfather was a, had red hair and... Uh, I guess his genes got down, passed down. And he was from Spain? From Spain originally. So, yeah. and, uh, so that's three generations? Great, great grandfather? Great, great, yeah, I think so. Four, four, gen four, four generations? Four generations. Very cool. And uh, yeah, it skipped all the generations and I uh, came with red hair. Red hair. And so they say, I'm actually my father's son. So they say, uh, they don't look alike. His uncle George actually looks like Cheech Marin. Right? Cheech or Chong? I don't know which one is which. Uh, Anyways, yeah. not Cheech, Ma Cheech Marin? No, I think Cheech so. is along with the long hair. Whatever. Anyways, um, it's been a long day. We just went to, uh, what's that place called? 
Evangeline, and Evangeline the, Cafe. Yeah. Down, uh, it's down off of, um, I guess Lamar, in in South Austin. Really good place. I got the uh, the gold band uh, krill. It was f fried krill with um, marinara sauce on top of uh, noodles. It was so good and cheese. What did you get? We got a uh, fried oyster po' boy. The fried oyster po' boy. How's that? Pretty good. It was like yeah. excellent. The the appetizer was the best though. The gator. What are they called? Gator balls. Gator bites. Gator bites. Gator bites. Actually, alligator fried and uh, <clears throat> fried with a sauce on top. They were really dope. Um, that's one of the things that I'm going to be bringing to Austin Real is um, having uh, introducing y'all to restaurants. In places around Austin that I recommend that I actually go to. I took a picture, so I'll put it up on the Twitter um, of, of the restaurant. It's actually a really cool place inside. Um, I love onion rings, and they got those string onion rings, so that was dope. I uh, always love that. Another thing I'm going to be bringing to Austin Real is um, the ability for people to hear about new and upcoming artists. Uh, Austin is the live music capital of the world. Do you see a lot of live music in Austin? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of music? Uh, I like country. I'd country? say. I'd yeah. say a little bit. He's got boots on, so yeah. I yeah, mean, right now. You can't you can't blame the guy. Uh, you, your family has a ranch in South uh, South Texas. Yeah, South Texas. Well, what's the, so, what's the name of the city? Uh, Hebronville. Hebronville. Yeah, so do some hunting there. Hunting. How big is the ranch? Uh, 1,200 acres. 1,200 acres. Wow. And is it just your family that hunts there? or? Yeah, yeah, just my family. Wow, dang. That's pretty dope. And you got like high fences to keep all the deer in? No, no. no? <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your favorite rifle? <coughs> favorite rifle? I mean, or um, a gun to shoot, just in general. You're, you're badass with a uh, shotgun. I know when we go disc shooting. Yeah, and I'm all right with the clays. Uh, I don't know. I shoot a two seventy. It's my dad's gun, but I actually just got into bow hunting. Hell yeah. So I got a new bow. So I'm Have trying you killed anything year. with the bow yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I went uh, hunting about a month ago, I shot my first deer with the bow. Nice. But then I was honest, I didn't, uh, I didn't actually get anything when I went to uh, my ranch in South Texas. I, uh, a little harder than I thought. Yeah. A little harder than I thought. Yeah. How far was, you said a boar? You shot a boar? No, no, a deer, yeah. A deer? How, yeah. how far was the deer? Probably like 20 yards. Nice. Twenty yards. So. And was it like a a feed a salt lake or a feeding area that you? Uh, it was under a kind of like a feeder. I was in a tripod stand, nice. up in a tree, so they couldn't see me. Nice. That's pretty dope, dude. Yeah. We need to go hunting for sure. I, I've never been, so I'm I'm a city boy. Uh, I want to. We me and this dude Ben Clay shoot. We went on my birthday. That was a lot of fun. I appreciated that. Yeah. Uh, tell you a little bit about myself. My name's Shane Pearson. Uh, I'm going to be a full-time host of Austin Real. It's going to be sponsored by me and everything. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can to represent my city. I have some really cool people that I want to show to the world. One of my uh, really good friends, Mandy, I actually just met her this year. But she opened up an orphanage in Africa, and she has 73 kids that she's uh, taken in right now. I think she's moving there in June or July this month to... Um, to live there full time, uh, she's 24. She's gorgeous. I can't wait to have her on the podcast. But not only that, uh, the athletic uh, marketing director for UT. Uh, I have connections with her, and we're gonna try and get her on here. Uh, I have a bunch of different media people here in Austin, um, film companies, music companies, um, media companies. Uh, one of my buddies, Paul, who runs all the media for 512 in the Avenue. I'm gonna have him on here. Um, my friend Michael Patton, he's from uh, Alabama, straight country, but he's got the sickest dreads that, I, that I've ever seen, and uh, he's going to be on here as well. Uh, he, he paints houses for a living, so if anybody wants a custom paint by Michael Patton the third, boom, let me know. Um, I'm about to put up a Twitter, Austin Real. It's going to be on my YouTube site that you're already on, Austin Real. Uh, I still have to get uh, information from London Real to make sure it's okay to use everything that I want to use. But, uh, you know, as long as they like me, then, then I think we'll be okay. Um, it, it, it's, 
gonna be fun. I'm I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about the opportunity. I actually heard uh, Brian and Nick on the Joe Rogan podcast, and um, they were like, "Yeah, we're having anybody that wants to do it, do it." Uh, I know this is crappy right now, but this is just the beginning. It's gonna be ten times better. I'm gonna get a studio. I'm gonna get mics. I'm gonna get a camera. I just wanted to put it up there so that I can be Austin real. Um, if you like the beard, hopefully I'll have it on here like two more podcasts, but then it's got to go because i got to do some business and make some money. Hopefully I'll be able to have my business sponsor the podcast, but if not, I'll probably put out my phone number so that you can call me and we can uh, hook something up. Um, I think with my new business, my goal this year is pretty high. But if I obtain it, it'll change my life. So um, podcast is really exciting, a really exciting thing that I, I get to be a part of. Um, me and Brandon just got back from lunch, and I had a few beers. This dude's got to go see his dad a little bit, so he couldn't. But uh, we, we went with my sisters and my older sister's boyfriend, and that was a good time. Uh, my little sister, she's 17, and my older sister, she's 20. Four. I'm 22, so don't, ladies, don't, don't, don't shy away, okay. I think he's available, too. I'm very much so available. It's kind of retarded. Um, but working down on 6th Street has been amazing, honestly. I recommend it to anybody that doesn't have a girlfriend, um, because you go out there, dude, and girls just think you're something. I mean, I think I'm something, too, but... The girls think I'm something, so that's what's important. Um, but yeah, dude, it's a blast. Uh, it's always a good time. Um, so, Brandon, uh, right, let's tell them a story about when we uh, decided to create a homemade rocket launcher. Homemade rockets. Homemade rockets, yeah. And we actually used those uh, little compact... Um, I don't know, like model rocket engines. Yeah, model rocket engines, but, but we were using that as the actual, like... Uh, body ammo yeah that was the ammo itself so what we did is took like the model rocket um, design that we already had we used one of your model rockets we cut off the tip on the top <coughs> so that it would make the just the cylinder aerodynamic and we glued it on the top and then we did we, we took off the fins on the side and cut them so that we could have you know a propulsion through the air and it wouldn't just I guess. Be out of control. Dud out, yeah, straight out. Uh, what we thought. Well, well, you know, let's put a huge rocket with some little wings on it and, and shoot it out of a tube and see what happens. So we got one of those um, uh, cloth cloth fabric tubes. And so it's a lot thicker than just the regular um, like toilet paper roll. It's actually a lot of cardboard wrapped up. Um, what we ended up doing was using the same ignition system that you would use for the rocket. You just push the button and it puts an electrical spark on the end of the rocket, launching it out the back. We used a medical cap on the back of the tube to, uh, to use it as like a launching platform. And then we were also able to slide the, uh, the little ignition triggers through the holes. Mm -hmm. um, so doing that was the beginning. Uh, we let the first one dry for like, a good amount of time. Yeah. And then uh, and then we, we went out and we launched the first one. And what did the first one do? Did it, didn't it they just... worked good. They worked good, I think. The first one? Yeah. yeah it, went, it, went, it went straight up in the air, I remember. And then it kind of just dudded out. But literally, we got in like, the rocket launching position on one knee. I think you... I don't remember who held it. Mm. Someone recorded. Yeah. I think, he, I think he launched it. I was videotaping. So we definitely have to find that tape because it's somewhere. Even though we missed the best part, which is the second rocket that we built, we didn't give it any time to dry. We literally wait like half an hour. We're like it's super glue. It's gonna be great. We used the first time we used one of the B class rockets, so it was real tiny, or just a lot smaller than the C, which is what we used the second time. I think the B one's only full like halfway, whereas the C's completely full of powder, so it just will take off. Um, what happened is we launched it from from a quick from a, a, a drainage ditch. So there's houses in the surrounding areas, but not directly where we are. And uh, 
Yeah, it kind of. At first, it, it held its path. Yeah, it went. It went straight. It went, it went, it went crazy. Yeah, and just flew off. Yeah, it went straight and just kind of went off to the right. And at first, I was like, "Whatever, let's pack up." I put the camera in the bag and and I started doing stuff. And then this dude's like, "Do you hear that?" I was like, "Hear what?" And he's like, <laughs> "He's like that crackling." I was like, "And it was a good like fifty yards away or something." Yeah, probably. And you just ran over there. So I got the camera bag and everything. I'm like, I'm not leaving this bitch. Like, I think we left the tube and stuff on the ground. But I was like, I got to bring the camera. We'd run over there. And by that time, it was probably the size of this living room. Probably like 15 by 10 feet. Yeah, probably. And the, the wind was blowing good. And there was a nice little brush fire going. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, shit. Like, give me your phone. Because we were probably like, I didn't have a phone yet. I didn't get a phone until I was 16, so yeah. that was my rule. Once I drove, I could get a phone. Um, but you were, you had one. Yeah, I guess I had one. Yeah, and I was like, give me your phone. I ran over to the street, and you, I don't even know what you did. I, uh, yeah, I just kind of started stomping the fire out a little bit, kind of, I don't know, doing whatever I could to, to make sure it didn't get bigger. And I actually ended up putting it out before this guy got the fire department there. Yeah, so I'm standing on the street, like, trying to find an address. I had to run out from, like, the little wooded area that we were at, past the playground, to, like, some back part of Cedar Park, Texas. And, uh, yeah, I had to call the fire department, but because it was a cell phone, they directed me to the Austin, and then they changed it over to Cedar Park, and I was like, freaking out because I didn't know what was going on but I knew that it had gotten so big by the time I got over there and that there were houses so close that the wind was blowing good enough that day that it could have just taken it I mean anyways and so yeah they got a big ass water truck came out there and uh it was uh it was definitely interesting um and it, yeah, we actually just got off with the warning they just told us not to do it again yeah well because they found the uh there goes our light. Um, they found our uh, our little engine, so they're like, "Well, I guess we don't need to uh, to figure out, you know, what started it. We don't have to call in the detectives or anything like that." And uh, that, was, yeah. that was pretty funny. His shins, though, were the best part because literally we all had shorts on. It was the middle of the summer, and he had no hair from here <laughs> all the way down. It was ridiculous because uh, we. I mean, he. Had, Dude, my shoes were a little bit melted, but his shoes were completely melted, completely yeah. melted. All the rubber on the bottom was like, had grass in it, and it was, it was funny, dude. Yeah, how to get new shoes. But. Yeah. Anyways. All right. But, uh, so this is just the pilot podcast. I, I really don't know how much further I want to go into it. I wanted to introduce Brandon. He'll probably be on my podcast a couple more times. Uh, we'll get we'll get more used to being in front of a camera and talking. Um, I plan on having a bunch of really interesting guests throughout the next year. I'm gonna try and do it every once a week, but right now these are the only materials I have. So me just talking and sitting down here, you know, it only goes so far. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we'll be talking about, you know, besides the guests that I have on the show, will be, uh, you know philosophy on life I'm real big into that religion um, my, I mean my parents were raised uh, my parents raised me Catholic I uh, probably consider myself agnostic right now don't really know what's going on with the world um, talk about wars governments conspiracies uh, I mean he, this dude knows I'm crazy he knows it I I know it I know it government don't don't hang me. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm just kidding. Anyways. Um, but, uh, yeah, so one thing I wrote down just to go over um, was a little ending. Um, but before I go into that, I have to state this because I do have a beard, and I might not on the next one. Is is There are such things as, as beard laws, okay? If you have a beard, people need to respect that, okay? Last night... People didn't respect my beard, okay? First rule of, of having a beard, if you're someone's friend and they have a beard, if you have queso on your beard and there's girls in the room, you let him know he has something on his beard. I can't feel that, Brandon. I can't feel that. I thought you were taking it home. Dude, I mean, I saved it for the bathroom later, Save but, it for later, yeah. but 
I mean, come on, dude. The, <laughs> the sisters or whatever. I mean, um, I don't know people. There's girls. We're trying to watch the national championship, right? And all I'm saying is if one of your friends, he or she, has a beard, then he or she needs to be let known that they have food on it, right? This food catcher is here for a reason. It's here for a reason. It's because it's beautiful, right? This is four months. I'm definitely going to go bigger next time. I just have a lot of business stuff to attend. So, Beard Law states, if you're friends with a man that has a really nice beard, Exhibit A, you must let him know when he has food on it, at least when women are present. At least 90% of the time. Okay, Beard Law states. Just throwing that out there. Duly noted. Duly noted. Thank you, friend. Yep. One of my best friends. Anyways, so... Any of this podcast, this is a little taste of my mindset. Deep. Deep. Ready? Knowledge is power. The truth is liberating. And money is freedom. Welcome to America, bitches. You don't matter. I don't matter. It's the fact that we are matter that matters. There is no final destination. You've made it. We're here. This moment lives on forever. It is a never-ending movie. Just because you close your eyes and open them doesn't mean the movie stops. Straight up, if you want to be amazing or do something amazing, you have to become the master of that art. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. In order to change it, you have to first master it. The future... You must be able to change and, and adapt to the abilities of what you're trying to accomplish. And, and you must be willing to change because change is the only thing that's certain. Death is certain. Life is not. So take advantage of it. Life is exciting. Life is amazing. Life is beautiful. I, I wake up every morning just stupid excited about my life. A lot of good reasons, like this dude, one of them, my sisters, my friends, my job, everything I do, all the people I see, my parents, it's all amazing. What you have to understand is that we are all tools of this earth. Some will destroy our mother. Most will embrace her. Mother Earth, that is. Uh, this is not the end and far past the beginning. This is how we keep it real, Austin real. Woo! That was interesting. Uh, speaking of moms, I'm a huge mama's boy, and I hope she never watches my podcast, but she probably will. So, hey, mom. And uh, you can follow me on uh, online at Austin, uh, Austin Real on Twitter, and I'm going to put it up at Facebook uh, that you can like. Brandon, you have a Twitter? Nope. All right, we're going to get Brandon to Twitter. So you can follow Brandon and his hunting experiences. He's going to start putting pictures up of uh, all the animals he kills with his bow. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm at a Twitter at Shane's Mad Planet because this is the craziest place ever. I mean, I'm sure you know that. Unless there's aliens that are in wars over money and having companies that are their friends and fuel sources that aren't created because of companies that own the best rechargeable batteries and solar panels aren't being invested in because of the resources that it takes and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, this is what we do. This is what I do. Uh, synchro synchronize to Moke. Check him out on, uh, hold on, let me, let me look it up real quick. It's, um, he, he just released his, his uh, Journey 3. Uh, there's a 1, 2, and 3, obviously. He just released Journey 3 on... Um, let me see if I can find it online. Uh, and I still got to call DJ. So DJ, you're about to get a phone call to make sure I can use your um, information. But the website, go to it and type in Journey3. It's going to be at uh, datpiff.com. It's www.datpiff.com. His name is synchron Synchronized to Moak. The Journey 3. Brandon, you got anything else to say? I think you wrapped it up. Hell yeah. Love y'all bitches. Kids, keep it real. Old school, new school. My school. It don't matter. Love you.
Peace from Austin, Texas.